Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here doing today's webcast. Uh, probably about 20, 25 minutes. If you've got questions, drop them into the Q&A box as they pop up. If they're time specific, I'll catch them as they come. Otherwise, I'll grab them at the end of the webcast. Certainly, we've got time to take as many questions as we need at that particular point. Um, and today, we're looking at index futures as a, as a, a as a, as a product class we can trade on the standard online share trading platform. Um, other futures, obviously, currency, commodity, stock, but we're focusing on, on, on the index futures. In essence, a standardized contract between two parties, buy or sell specific asset, standardized quality and quantity, date and price agreed. So that means that they have these buy or sell. It means standardized, standardized contract. And the fact that we're doing it via the JSC is that standardization of the contract. We're going to be a buyer or a seller, depending which side of the deal that we are on. Um, and of course, a particular uh, expiry date. That expiry is going to be third Thursday of March, June, September, and December. Um, the question we get asked a lot is how do we value a, a futures contract? And in essence, it is the underlying plus interest between now to expiry, less dividends due. In truth, when we're looking at, 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 at this in the, in the environment of, of talking index futures, we can run the math. But what we see is that because there's enough liquidity going through, the market sits at fair value. Uh, the, the, the futures market. If it didn't, then then traders would arbitrage it. You know, you would sell one and buy the other and that sort of thing. So it self-corrects to fair value in, in, in that sense. So we can crunch the numbers. Uh, the question is interest rate and, of course, the dividends that are due. Yeah, we, we Different folks will use a different interest rate. We can estimate it. Dividends, some of them we know what those dividends are going to be. The rest we need to make an assumption. For example, a dividend that might only be declared in November, paid December, will be in this contract. So we don't know about it. I don't stress the fair value. I'm trading the points. I'll touch on that in a moment. Uh, been around forever. Locally, RMB kicked it off in 1987. Um, a year later, we saw Suffix being formed with a amalgamation of banks uh, in South Africa. And then in uh, 2001, the JSC bought Suffix. And it's important that the JSC owns Suffix. Or that it, what we're not doing here is counterparty risk. In other words, if someone defaults, if I end up losing a lot of money uh, on my particular trade and I can't pay it, um, ultimately, your counterparty st stands in, the, the, the clearinghouse rather stands in, who's between the broker and Suffix, and ultimately, the JSC will step you right. So you don't take counterparty risk. Other people defaulting is not of any concern to you. <clears throat> um, margin requirement rather than full payment. What we mean by margin requirement, as with any derivative product, that, that's the point of it being that, say, for example, the underlying value is 50000 you don't pay 50000 you pay $5,000. Um, you get profit or loss off that full 50000 but you've only paid a deposit. So that's where the gearing comes in. In this case, 50 into 5 or 5 into 50 give you 10 times gearing. Every 1% move on the index will give you 10% move in your profit or loss that you've made in the particular trade. Um, so it gives you that amplification of that underlying uh, asset. Uh, backed, as I said, by Suffix and the JSC, used by hedges, used by speculators. Uh, you know, for the folks who are listening into today's podcast, watching the video, sorry, webcast, it really is about speculators. Uh, we see some of the large corporates and the like, the institutions doing hedging, uh, mostly we're doing speculating. Uh, we'll see intraday trading, you know, classic intraday where you close all positions by end of day. You go to bed at night, you have zero open positions. And then, of course, overnight trading as well. A lot of people stress about holding overnight. You know, they're worried about what happens. We go to bed uh, and something crazy happens in the rest of the world and we wake up the next morning and our market has moved markedly against us. Um, in truth, sometimes it will move in our favor. I, you know, that's a personal risk decision you need to make. I have no problem. I do trades that run for a couple of days. I took an entry on Friday. But there we go. Audio's back. Sorry, you lost audio there for a sec. I took an entry on Friday. Hold it over the weekend. Uh, I, I don't worry about that in, in the least. Certainly, it adds risk. Um, I happen to be long, but sometimes you'll be short. And as today, the, the move up, the gap up was up rather than down. So I'm sitting pretty in that space. Importantly, with index futures, we are trading points. Index futures, not rands and cents. 
So what we have here is a situation, we've got the buyers on the left as always, the sellers on the right, uh, 50,360. We're back with audio. Sorry folks, I'm struggling with internet here, which is therefore struggling with audio. I do pick up when it stops, so I will pause and wait for it to reconnect. If it dies, we'll move to a plan B and we'll send you a copy of the video. Um, but for now, we're going to carry on because it certainly does come back. And when I tested it earlier, it worked fine. So we're trading points. So you go, if you're buying, you'll buy at 5363. That's not the price you pay. That's the point at which you enter the position. And then if it goes up 100 points, you've made 100 points. Um, and if it goes down, you've lost 100 points. So we trade on points and there's a value either 10 Rand or 1 Rand per point. But this is the key difference between trading a share. Whereas this would be looking at a share and you would say, well, that share is 503 Rand. If it goes up to 510, then I've made 7 Rand. Oh, no. In this case, if we went to 510, that would be 51,000, uh, and you would have made yourself some 640-odd, uh, 630-odd points of profit. I'm going to come back to that, so we'll park that there for now. Some details on the various different contracts. There are essentially two contracts that we can be trading. Yeah, now, so some of you are struggling on the audio. As I said, I'll carry on. We'll see how it goes. If it totally fails, I'll re-record it this afternoon. Um, You've got your Aussie, which is the main contract, and then we've got the Ormi. Now, the Ormi is a mini contract, um, but let's kick off. The underlying in both cases is the top 40 index. Don't think it's the all share index, it's the top 40 index. Uh, your margin as of this morning was uh, 50,505 Rand for the top 40 for the Aussie uh, and 5,050 Rand and 50 cents for the Ormi. What you can immediately see is there's a 10 times difference. Your exposure is just over half a million for the Aussie and uh, just over 50,000 for the Omi. If you take a long position and it went to zero, that would be your total risk. Now, an index doesn't go to zero, well, unless the world is ending. Um, but in essence, you know, certainly that is your exposure and your risk. But indices, uh, I want to say never, but I'm going to say I can't remember an index going to zero. Let's, you know, never say never. The important point is value per point. With Aussie, 10 round a point. With Ormi, one round a point. <clears throat> In other words, if you make 100 points profit on the Aussie, you've made a, 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 a thousand rand. 100 points at 10 round a shot, you've made a thousand rand per contract. And on the Ormi, you've made one rand uh, you, per times your 100 points, you've made 100 rand per contract. What this means is that the Ormi is a great place to learn to trade. Now, you can kick off with 10,000 Rand, and I'm going to come back to it in a moment, but 10,000 Rand, you can start trading the Ormi, you can do it the real McCoy, and slowly build it up to a full Aussie contract, and then slowly scale, and then one day you're trading, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 Aussie contracts as a, at, at a time. Most of the other bits, you know, if you want to trade uh, CFDs, if you want to trade equity CFDs, if you want to trade FX or anything like that, 10,000 ain't enough to start with. Now, you can start nice and simple. Uh, volumes per day, about 20 to 30,000 contracts on Aussie. Ormi, much smaller at about 1,000, 1,500. Some big days, 2,000. But pretty much, uh, you'll find it significantly bigger trading on the, 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 the Aussie. And that makes sense. That's the main contract. Spreads typically tighter on the Aussie than the Ormi. Cost of transaction, the same, 12 and 50 plus VAT. That includes booking fees. Some brokers will quote booking fees separate. This was twelve fifty plus VAT. What's that? Fourteen, fourteen forty five if if math is right, uh, and that's total included price. So on Aussie, fourteen forty five is a point and a half. When you buy, point and a half when you sell. Here, fourteen forty five is uh, fifteen points when you buy, fifteen points when you sell. I say to folks, if you're testing a system in Aussie, don't look at your PNL. Look at the points that you've made because your PNL gets badly skewed. You know, and an Aussie, in and out, three points. Ormi, in and out, 30 points. You're 25, 27 points behind. That's a big difference. So look at the points that you've made a profit on, that p &L, rather than the rands and cents p &L. That'll give you a better indication of how Ormi trading will convert to Aussie trading. Uh, no market makers in the Aussie. There are market makers in the Aussie. They're independent of standard online share trading. They're third parties. Anyone can become a market maker, but it does help with that lower liquidity. It means that there's always someone there trying to, trying to, and I stress the trying to, ensure that trade happens at or around, 
and I stress that to around fair value. Uh, stop losses, yes, you can set stop losses. So I've been doing some testing on the Ormi. Uh, my stops actually trigger fine, and I haven't had any issues. They trigger fine, they trade fine. So certainly liquidity can be a problem, but I've, the testing I've been doing has been absolutely fine on it. Uh, chartable, yes, you can chart the Aussie. Don't chart the Ormi. The Ormi is, in essence, a replica of the Aussie, and the point why I say don't chart it is lower liquidity. You're going to get a much better chart on the Aussie. What you can also do is you could actually chart the top 40 index, and that's what I do. So I chart the top 40, um, and then I trade the Aussie. I chart the top 40 because in the shorter time frame, it's less volatile. You know, if someone comes in with 50 contracts to trade Aussie, long or short, they can move that Aussie. They can, depending when they trade it, they could move it 50, maybe 100 points. Yet the same value traded in the, in the top 40 in the equity space, you wouldn't even notice it. So that's why I prefer it's a much smoother ride. If you're looking for wild swings and volatility, chart Aussie. If you're looking for smooth and gentle, chart top 40. Don't chart the Aussie. Chart Aussie top 40 and then either trade Aussie or Aussie. Shorts are allowed. Shorts enable you to sell something you don't own so that you make profit on the downside. In other words, you can make a profit as something is falling. If we go back to this example here, so you would sell at 50, 360, and you would then have a position of minus one, and then as it was falling, you would be making profit. So it falls 100 points, it's minus 100 points, times your minus one position, you are plus 100 points. Uh, close out, as I said, uh, futures contracts, so they have quarterly expiry periods for our contracts, that is third Thursday, March, June, September, and December. Uh, typically happens at lunchtime. Last contract, I don't. I was actually I was uh, on holiday, but I know we had some technical glitches. I'm not sure when it did kick off in the end. But every quarter it closes out. Uh, standard online share trading. Well, if you are long, if you have a position, if you have any open position, long or short, uh, on closeout, they will roll you into the next contract. So if we are currently trading the December 17 contract, if you are long at or short at that expiry, they will roll you into the March 18 contract. You can elect to be closed out um, if you want, but that the default is to roll you into the next contract. An important point is that the current contract will be trading at 50. The new contract will be trading at uh, 50,400 points. Those 400 points is, in essence, the plus interest minus dividend between now and expiry. If the index went sideways, those 400 points would eke out from day to day over the period. Um, I don't stress closeouts at all. I typically roll, uh, except one proviso. I avoid going short in closeout week. Um, closeout weeks are usually bullish, so I don't take, I don't open a short position in closeout week. I don't like to be short over closeout, but I'm happy to be long over closeout, and that's particular to my system and the process I have on my system. Uh, Index futures need to be traded in a futures account. You click on my account, product registration, futures registration, um, and that'll, you can either you can either uh, enable an existing account to be futures or you can have a new account. My advice is to do a new account because then your futures trading is separate from your equity, your CFDs and everything else. You still only have one login. You still have only one monthly admin fee. It just means that you've got a, a, a different accounts for different processes. That process will happen overnight. If you did it this afternoon, you would have the account on Tuesday. Um, and then you find them under Instruments, Index, Futures. You'll see the September ones still listed, not tradable. Currently, the December ones are the ones that we are trading. And what you don't see is the March ones. The March 2018 will come in, in, in sort of a couple of days, maybe a week before the December contract expires. You'll then start trading the, the March 2018 contracts. I'm always con trading what we call the near-dated contract. So I trade whatever is the current one. As soon as that one expires out, I'll move to March. And the reason I trade the near-dated contract is that's because we, that's where we're going to see the liquidity happening. Most of the trade is going to be happening in that near-dated contract. So that's the one that I care about. Here's some screenshots. We'll go have a look at Iris Viewpoint in a second. Uh, that's the same buys and sells. Just a point, when you're putting into Iris, into the Viewpoint, search for Aussie ALSI, and then make sure you pick the right one, the right contract. If you want Aormi AOMI, and again, make sure you pick the right contract. Uh, and there is the chart. But let's go across to here where we will see. So this is Iris Viewpoint. This is live. I have my Aussie deck, as you can see, sitting here. Um, and next to it on the other side, I have my top 40 with my 721 moving average. Currently long, and I took that trade, so we can go have a look at the, the process and stop losses and the like. That trade is, is practically there. Um, my market depth sits there. 
and it's not going to remember what the security is. So I type in Aussie, and what you see is there's a bunch. So these are options, there's the spot, so we go to the Aussie deck. And there's my bids and offers sitting in Aussie deck. Uh, six point spread, not bad for lunchtime. It often widens out around lunchtime. There it just went to seven, went to eight, now it's seven point spreads. And on the side down there, you can see most recent trades. Um, I'm not so much looking at that. I trade off the J200, which is top 40, and I take the position in here. Uh, I traded a Ormi on Friday. That cross there would have uh, triggered it. Um, so that was the trigger one, was it? Let me double check. I can't remember my times now. Uh, indeed, that was the trigger. That one confirmed. So I went long on the 11 o'clock candle. So I would have gone long on that candle. Um, and I would have gone along at the end of the candle. So there's my entry, just over 50,000. We're sitting at 50,500. So I'm about 480 points up in this trade. Stop loss is uh, daily ATR. If we go along here, you can see this. It's my Ormi. Um, it's got a stop loss in place already. You would click on the far side there to, to activate a stop loss, but I've already got one. So you certainly can set stop losses, um, and they work very well. So in the Ormi, perhaps a little bit less, but I've been doing I've been doing a bunch of testing with it. Yeah, you can see stacks of trades going through um, from just before I went on holiday, and then I did. Uh, in fact, those are all from just before no before holiday, and then just as I came back, um, testing this out on, on on the Ormi, particularly looking at Ormi because I, you know liquidity. How does liquidity work? And what I'm seeing is that my stops are triggering, so some are failing because I'm cancelling them. Um, but my stops are triggering no problem, uh, and they're hitting the market, and they're trading within, you know, worst case, 20, 25 points of, of the stop level. Most of the time, they're getting it within 5 or 10 points of that stop loss level. So the stops are working within Ormi. Uh, it does as it says on the, on, on the sticker, and that works absolutely perfectly. If you're going to add a stop, do you want stop loss or alert? Do you want fixed or trailing? Uh, I run trailing stops. And then you just follow through the process and under my account, stop loss and alerts, they will sit there and you can see them sit. Uh, some questions coming on Iris. We'll go back to that at the end of the presentation. We'll take some questions there. Uh, so you trade them, as I said, in a futures account. That's critically important. You can't trade them in an equity account. Futures trade 530, sorry, 8.30 to 5.30. So they open half an hour before the market and close half an hour after the, the equity market. I don't stress that. I, I The way my system works, I'm only going to trade between 9 and 5. Um, some folks say they won't trade, the, you know, they, they trade the, off the Aussie, but they'll wait for that period. If I'm trading a, 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 a engulfing candle, I'll trade in those periods. Uh, gaps are only applicable between nine and five as well. As I said, you pay that margin fee, um, which is this number as illustrated there. And of course, the Aussie is 10 times what the Aussie is. Standard online share trading does the suffix margin plus 50%, and that just gives you, so if you if your account goes into red, they basically use that portion of your margin first before they start eating into your proper margin, and then you are in closeout. Importantly, your profit or loss is recorded in real time. In other words, during the course of the day, as this is moving, you are having money credited or debited off your account. If your account goes into, into closeout, into, into the red, they start swallowing up that extra 50% you have. If that extra 50% is then gone, online share trading, you are then an auto closeout, and they will then start looking to either, yeah, they'll, they'll want more money or they will start exiting positions in order to get your account back into the positive. Um, and then end of day, mark to market, uh, this is just a theoretical price. We don't stress it, we don't use it, so it's not particularly a worry. So it's that initial margin you pay, currently around 50 or 5,000. Live is your variation margin during the course of the day, um, and closeout is when you've swallowed a third of that variation margin, you're now in the red, and now you're liable for closeout. You will get emails and SMSs saying, hey, things are not looking good here, you know, please deposit money, close positions, something like that. Um, so it's not, you know, you, you, you should be aware of the situation, but certainly it does work. So just some of the systems, I'm not going to spend time with it. We've done these videos during the course of the year. They, the links are all at the bottom down there. <clears throat> my 721, which is my primary system, uh, which I'm trading the Aussie futures with, um, and an hourly chart have been doing since beginning of the year. Um, typical trade about 10 bars in duration. So 
about a day and a half or so. Although recently we've seen that a little bit longer. Uh, small tweak I did make from when I did the video is I've adjusted my stop loss. Instead of using two times the hourly ATR, which was averaging about 250 to 300 points, I use one times the uh, daily ATR, which is about 500, give or take 20 or 30 points, as my trailing, and I put a fixed in at two times the hourly ATR. Gap trading, which is the second view, which I've hardly been doing because we get so few gaps. And the point is that the 721 has been keeping me in the market much of the time. Again, link down at the bottom. And then engulfing candle, which is also a second view. The process is to potentially trade a couple of different systems. And I, I've, you know, the, the links are there and you're welcome to them. But the way my 721 is working is I've actually moved to the point now where I'm trading only a single system. I trade just my 7 and 21. And the hourly chart, it keeps me busy enough. I'm probably at the end of the year going to switch it to a daily chart um, and then start using uh, uh, also trading on the DAX and also trading some uh, one of the FX pairs, one of the majors for long reasons, probably because the DAX trades in euros. I'll probably tra trade pound sterling. I uh, sorry, sterling euro, because that also then trades in euros. So I'm keeping all my trades in euros. I don't have currency conversions all the time. So closing, I, I think indices are the best thing to trade. I absolutely think indices are the best thing to trade. Uh, I haven't traded equities in, in 10 years, except for two ungeared trades I did a couple of years ago in Avenge and uh, Lonman, because they were zombie stocks. They were easy. So I think they're great products to trade. Trade them with caution. Um, you know, if you if you if you trade like a fool, you're going to lose money. That look, that's true with anything. You know, even if you doesn't matter what you trade, even if you're trading marbles, if you trade like a fool, you'll lose money. Um, time frames, you can do anything. Five minute to weekly charts. You know, absolutely you can. Uh, indices work like that. My lazy trading is a I use weekly charts. So trading Aussie and hourly, moving that to weekly. Um, any time frame. The time frame, and I don't want to delve too much into it. Go to justonelabcom slash direct. Uh, last week's podcast was about time frame, so you'll find stuff there around. Watch your margins. Um, now, you should never be, you know, I had a bad drawdown in August, but even then I was well away from at any point starting to get margin calls. For 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 safety, if you want to trade an Aussie, 100,000 Rand per contract, or me, 10,000 Rand per contract. Now, on the one side, 100 is big, but 10,000 is small. So the point is that we can start trading with 10,000 Rand. You know, we, we learn by webcasts, we learn by reading, we learn by videos and courses and all of that. But truly we learn by doing. And the OMI is a great place to learn to trade an index, to try a system, to test it, to see how it works and that sort of thing with 10,000 Rand. Now, in truth, your margin's five or 50, so your requirement is 100 or 10,000, depends on your drawdown. You might be able to sneak away with 70 or 80,000. Uh, or seven or eight in the OMI space. But if you really want that margin of safety, you know, and my point is, I always say to folks, when you're starting your first year of trading, you should not be trying to make money. You should be trying to not lose money should be your key requirement in that sense. Uh, folks, that's it. If you've got questions, there's contact details, legal disclaimers, as always, uh, contact details. There was a question coming through on... The viewpoint iris so someone was saying you can't draw trend lines you can if you click on that little arrow if you see my mouse down there you click on that arrow you get the trend lines you can draw yourself trend lines there's my trend line i can now go and adjust it in terms of i want to make it uh yellow i want to make it fatter i can also change my coordinates but there is my trend line and you've got all the other different there as well uh fibonacci's and gains and all of that sort of stuff is there Let's delete that. So you've got your trend lines there, and then your uh, indicators, etc., all sit here. It's not every indicator in the world. We don't need every indicator in the world, but it certainly is a, a bunch of them sitting there. Um, <clears throat> question: Why don't I watch the bids and offers? So I, if I care about the bids and offers, I can also stick them in here. I don't know if they're there right now. And in fact, let's pull up. Uh, now it hasn't loaded this page yet this morning, so it's not going to be there. 
So it's how I trade, I, and and different folks are going to trade differently. You know, for me, it's just about the what the top forty is doing. That's what I care about. The actual bids and offers aren't of a stress to me, so I don't worry about bids and offers. I'm not particularly watching them. It does get a bit hairy sometimes when when I'm entering and exiting because I enter and exit at market, um, and you can see some 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 nasty slippage coming in. That is just what it is. So there's the. No, that gave me all Z. I want the all me. So I have a quick peek at the all me contract. So you see, I mean, not even that much wider a spread, only a, a nine point spread there, not too bad. We've certainly seen trades go through. Um, and let's see the frequency of them. Uh, the trade every couple of minutes, some activity at 45 or 42. But those 20 trades have happened in 30 odd minutes. 40 odd minutes, just over, just over 40 minutes for those last 20 trades. So the OMI is giving you liquidity. Nowhere near what the sort of liquidity you'll see on the OZ. Now, will this page load on me? Um, there I've got them there. Uh, is it going to show me volumes? I don't think I've got volumes. Yes, I do. So the OMI has done 842 contracts so far today. The OZ has done 7,700 contracts today, so about nine times larger. Another question, can I trade from screen, from, from uh, uh, Iris? Yes. So if you're sitting in this, you click on the buy or the sell price to do it. If you're sitting here on my Aussie screen. So I usually have that hidden just to give me more space. But I click that little arrow there. I say to it, sell. And the trade screen will pop up. There it is there. Um, and the trade screen will pop up and ask me for uh, what's my volume. Limit or am I uh, uh, at market? It's always good for end of day. No choice on that. So you can place your orders from here. You can certainly trade from from Iris Viewpoint. You cannot set your stop loss on Iris Viewpoint. That's an important point. So you can enter your trades. You just can't enter your stops. So I then enter the trade and then I boogie along to the website and enter the stop loss. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any questions. Ah, so how profitable is my 721? My expectation is to make uh, per contract around five or six thousand points uh, per year, so around fifty, sixty thousand, about fifty, sixty percent, um, and then of course costs, etc., come on top of that. Uh, at this point in the equation, um, I think I'm, pr I'm probably on track for five thousand. So I did thirty eight hundred points for the first six months of the year, um, and I take that up to the June expiry because I run the expiry periods. Uh, up to June expiry, I had done 3,800 points. I was well ahead of track. If we just multiplied it and you know, doubled it out, I was up to make 7,500. Um, of course, Murphy had some fun with me in August, uh, so I'm on track to do about <clears throat> five four. But it's a, it's a moving it's a moving target. You know, the target is one thing, but what your target's going to pay out over a couple of years. You're not going to hit it every single year. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Graham, my absolute pleasure. Uh, I'll check the video if you if you came in late. There were some gremlins with audio. I'll tweak those out so the video will be up late this afternoon. Um, someone's quickly asking for those links again. So they're all on the website under <coughs> the primary system. <coughs> Excuse me, they're all on the website under uh, announcements. You'll find webinar downloads. You'll find them there. The 721, and there is the URL, uh, the gap trading. There's the URL sitting down at the bottom, and I just lost more audio again. So there's the URL down at the bottom. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time, everyone. Uh, until next time. Cheers, all.